Hey, what's going on, everyone? Joe Menza here, and we're going to do a nice little winter watercolor scene. And for this one, you're going to need your regular watercolors, and of course, my trademark white gouache edition. Because as you know, I like to paint snow. I like to leave the white of the paper sometimes, but I'm here to paint. So I'm going to wet this paper down. This is Strathmore 300. And I'm using my little portable Windsor Newton Cotman. palette and the paints are dry so you have to scrub these a little bit more talked about that before getting some raw sienna in here now I will say because I, I waver back and forth I use the Cottonman colors which are technically student colors and I use the Daniel Smith and Daniel Smith is a lot more pigment when you're running those off of dry cakes, cubes, whatever you want to call them, you get a lot more pigment. You can run them dry. A Cotman, you should use them fresh out of the tube or you really got to scrub them here. You got to work at it. Now I added a little light red here. What I'm going for is, is I want some distant trees in the back kind of misty kind of some snow just came down is kind of the thinking in my mind so I'm producing a little bit more water here probably too much water a little bit of blue Just trusting the process, I guess. Basically, really just trying to establish a background that is sort of faded off. You know, you're looking back into the woods. At least that's where I'm going. You know, follow the paint. Whenever you're painting and you see something going a certain way, exploit that. Uh, your vision can change. Don't be so set in your mind that you can't call an audible, as I've always said. And you start to see, say, hey, that, that's a unique effect there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to pursue that. Um, this is an open project. This is, oh, you know, if you're painting from a photo, it's got to be this certain way. If you're very rigid in your thinking, um, you may be setting yourself up for a little bit of failure because it almost never really turns out exactly like that. And you, something may happen with the paint. You may grab a color. There's just so many variables that uh, it's, it's best to allow yourself for that freedom. It gives you freedom. It gives you the ability to be open with the way you're painting and that you're letting kind of things go because not everything is really under your control. I mean, certain things with the water, atmosphere, drying, wind, depending on if you're outside, the temperature in your house, all these little variables. So, you know, when you're done, you can analyze the painting and appreciate some of the, that's what makes watercolor, I think, exciting is that, you know, the problem is when you try to control it too much. If you're controlling and you try to have an iron fist when you're painting. Um, you want to you, you want to let the things happen because that's the excitement of watercolor is to surprise yourself and let the paint surprise you. That's what keeps you coming back for more. Um, is that randomness of the watercolor? If you were hoping for, you know, if you're doing oil painting or acrylic painting a picture's unfolding before your eyes and then you keep making little changes and you have a quick response. In other words, you're painting, you put a little paint on and you stand back and you say, oh, I like that or I don't like that. With watercolor, a lot of these things are not really going to come about until the actual piece dries. 
So there was an old saying, if it looks right when you're painting it in watercolor, it's wrong. <laughs> because when you're painting it, what you're going to get when you step back from the finished piece and you look at it like the next day and it absorbs in the paper and the water dries out, you're going to notice little things that you, you didn't do on purpose. And that's really the allure, the appeal of watercolor. Um, you don't get that really with other mediums. Once you put that paint on there, pretty much what you see is what you're going to get except for color shift. You have a little bit of color shift in oil and then more so, I believe, in acrylic. And you also have it in watercolor too, especially if you use cotton paper. Now, this is not cotton paper, and we've discussed this before. And I will say, I'll, I'll start saying it in every video. If you're a beginner, I say use practice paper so you're not spending too much money. But if you can afford it and you think you might be serious about painting, by all means, buy the best. Buy 100% cotton paper. Get handmade if you can. Handmade paper is really amazing. And uh, Daniel Smith or Windsor & Newton Artist Grade or any of those. Um, but you really don't need them. You don't use student-grade paint. I've seen some amazing stuff out there with Cotman. So I, I'm going to say I, I don't really think you need it but I do like Daniel Smith paints I think their pigments are amazing and uh, they make me look better at times so that's just my opinion so for whatever reason I'm painting on this and it's there's a faded look here I'm kind of letting it go and I want the light to come through the trees and I'm kind of removing with the paper towel this is probably too much work really for a watercolor but I'm going with it having some pine trees. And I think part of the problem is because in my travel palette I'm using here today, the paint is so dry in there and I'm not really getting the paint off. But that's really what watercolor should be. It's, it's a little more muted. It's not as heavy. I tend to go heavier with my paints. See, I'll put these, I'll put this on a little bit heavier. I'm always trying to think of ways to do these pine trees better give you those branches and things. But I'm trying to show you a fun way to paint. I don't want to make it over complicated and I'm showing you using this large brush. So when I'm showing you, I'm trying to pass on something that I think you'll enjoy and have fun with too. We have a lot of people in the group that make videos um, that are in our group. And we have a list of them in the group that of people that make videos using this brush. And so it was a fun thing when it started to share with my other art friends. And uh, a lot of people seemed to really like it, especially when we went through COVID. It was a lot of people looking for something to do. And so um, when we went through the whole COVID thing, it just kept going, you know, that kind of thing and trying out different different things and adding things and adding white and, you know, just sort of exploring the entire medium. I do believe for whatever reason, I don't know why, I kind of started this one off with a lot of water. 
and water control is a big part of, of watercolor painting. But let this one be a bit of an example if you use a lot of water, how it look at it. Um, again, you can see I'm trying to do this light work. I want these middle area to kind of be set back and then have these pines in the foreground. I tend to make my pine trees too big. I think part of that is because of the hake brush. I have a scale thing where it's like, I have a hard time making things small. I don't know what it is. It's so something I've always had. If you tend to paint a smaller scale, then it'll make you look like you have a more panoramic scene. Now, another thing you can do with the white gouache is say you have an area you don't like or you want to kind of push it back. You can use a white wash of gouache like I did in between the trees here. Kind of like you would do in an acrylic type painting. Now for all the white gouache fans, here comes the white gouache for the snow. I really enjoy painting snow. It's so easy to just not paint anything and use the white of the paper. And that's fun too, but I like painting the snow. Now here I'm adding a little white in, a little snow on the trees, nothing super duper obvious. And I, I've sped up some portions of this, not all of it, but I don't want the video to be extremely long. One thing you can do is you can use purples and blues and mix those with your white, or just light washes of purples and blues. And those have a snow-like quality to them, depending on how you see like the you know, snow reflects off the light, off the ground. Um, if you have a particular color of that in your sky, you can use that as well. And you can play with those colors and you don't just have to use straight white. See now right here I can put in a nice little creek if I wanted to and in wintertime the creeks, especially in paintings, tend to be a little darker, almost like a black or a really super dark blue really sells that winter creek effect. Now what you can do also is you can grab a little raw sienna or yellow ochre and you can make like little grasses sticking up out of the snow. That helps to sell that winter scene as well. So here I put a mat on just to kind of give myself sort of a window. 
and I'll do a little tweaking here and there. And now I'll take my small brush and I'll put a little, I don't always do this, but I, I don't know, I just thought it'd be fun to throw a little deer in, in the scene. Can be a little tedious you know pull up a little picture for reference take your time with it and pull up a picture of a deer or something and just you know it's gonna be small so not a lot of people are gonna focus on details you just catch the main elements of it maybe the horns on top a little white trim Don't forget to put a little shadow underneath the, so, you know, you anchor it to the ground and give it a little more realism. This segment I'm speeding up just a little bit because it's, uh, a little more tedious and time consuming. And I think you get the idea.
bit of white gouache on the tail and underneath the neck. Give it a nice, nice little look. So that's it, everybody. Nice little winter Christmas card type scene. Hope you enjoyed this one, and I will see you on the next video.